Hi, Ben Carpenter here, answering another question that I had from my Facebook page. The question was asking me to discuss exercise order, supersets, what exercises go well in supersets, what exercises don't pair, essentially discussing the whole topic rather than having one question in particular. So, first things first, exercise order. Uh, I always say that the most important exercise comes first. There's research to back this up. There were two groups. One group had uh, four exercises from largest muscle group to smallest muscle group, and the other group completed them from smallest to largest in reverse order. Uh, the conclusion of this, and I quote, if an exercise is important for specific training goals, it should be performed at the beginning of the training session, whether or not it is a large or small muscle group exercise. So if biceps are a priority, put them first. If squats are a priority, put them first. doesn't matter if it's big or small in uh, musculature being trained, just put the exercise first. <clears throat> okay, supersets. It's a big topic. Um, I love supersets. I use them a lot for clients, so it's nice for me to explain why I use them so much, uh, whether they've picked up on this or not. Okay, the reasons for supersets are, one, Supersets are shown to decrease the drop-off curve with exercise. What that means is that let's say you're doing sets of front squat, you do six reps, six reps, five reps, four reps, uh, and your reps completed go down as you fatigue. Supersets have been shown um, to decrease that drop-off curve. They had two groups of people, um, both completed 10 minutes worth of exercise, one with bench press bench pulls, uh, bench pulls like a chest supported row. Um, one was in a straight set format and the other was in a superset format. Um, and the superset format showed that the, the greater quality of work was completed. So in terms of exercise performance it shows like that supersets in this example antagonist chest back pairing uh, shows promise for, for better exercise performance. Reason number two um, is body composition. So supersets um, allow you to complete a greater volume of work for a given unit of time. So let's take two trainees, both train for 20 minutes. One of them does chest press, waits two minutes, another set of chest press, waits two minutes, another set of chest press, etc. Supersets, he could take that exact chest routine, same two minute uh, rest interval, but in that two minute gap, add in a bicep exercise, a back exercise, or a leg exercise, all examples of antagonist or opposite pairing. Um, complete the same number of sets for chest, but he will have completed a greater volume of work overall in the same time frame. So, uh, great exercise density more work completed in the same units of time. There's some some interesting research on this one um, uh, for me. One of these, uh, an alternative study, um, two groups, three to, six, three to six sets of six exercises. One group rested 35 seconds, the other one rested three minutes in a straight sets method. So supersets or circuit training with 35 seconds or three minutes between straight sets. And here's the interesting bit. So, I quote, no significant differences were observed in aerobic exercise energy expenditure between trials. However, now this is key, when expressed relative to time, the excess energy expenditure was significantly greater during superset method. Reciprocal supersets resulted in greater blood lactate and excess post-exercise oxygen consumption than traditional resistance exercise. Uh, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption is EPOC, uh, essentially a marker of raised metabolism post-training. One of the things that gets quoted the most when people talk about high-intensity interval training versus aerobic exercise, i.e. HIIT raises metabolism for longer post-workout. So, what we have are um, examples of increased performance in the gym as in you can sustain performance for a greater period of time with the superset method um, greater fat loss one of these studies rather than actually comparing um, uh, EPOC and blood lactate actually showed that there was um, a greater 
uh, body fat percentage decrease in the superset group compared to the uh, straight sets method. I'll put the studies underneath in the YouTube comments, so if anyone wants to look, you can just have a browse down there. So, for me, there's uh, a lot of research that favours superset usage. Uh, you can also do triset usage, which is three exercises, alternate, or circuit usage when you're performing more, more than three exercises. So, the other side of the coin is when wouldn't you use supersets? Let's say you're training for relative uh, strength, that's strength expressed to body weight, or absolute strength, which is uh, how strong you are irrespective of body weight. Um, let's say you're doing a snatch or a hand clean or a clean and jerk or any Olympic lift. These have a high degree of neurological complexity. So they're very highly rehearsed motor unit patterns um, and very complicated. They're not things that you want to perform when you have excessive fatigue in the body because technique breaks down very, very easily. That's why snatches should be performed with low reps. It's kind of the, the anti-crossfit argument in that regard, but that's a whole other kind of worms. So, if you're an Olympic lifter and you're trying to improve your snatch, and you're doing sets of snatch, I would advise against supersetting it with anything that's going to have any high energy cost, because that's your important exercise. You don't want anything to um, disturb that. The, the study that I presented showed exercises that were much simpler, so bench press, lat pull down, bicep curl, uh, tricep extension, that was the, the four exercise study, or bench pull and bench press, which was the, the paired study. None of them looked at Olympic lift variations, so if you're performing very complicated movements, I would do them in a straight set format, or if you're going to superset it, superset it with something with a very low energy cost, something that isn't going to fatigue you, when you perform your main Olympic lift. Um, so, in conclusion, if you want body composition benefits, fat loss, muscle gain, toning, which doesn't exist, but again another story, um, supersets, trisets, circuit training are all very, very effective methodologies. Even if you only want to increase uh, the amount of work you do in a very short space of time, so people that want to train for half an hour get in the gym, get out as quickly as possible, or even over the same unit of time it's shown to uh, decrease the drop-off curve so your ex exercise performance is maintained for longer. So there's my, my research summary. Um, if you're going to implement it, start with antagonistic movements, so go chest and back or biceps and triceps, so good. Uh, upper body or lower body is again antagonistic or opposing. Um, if you're looking at same muscle groups, so say uh, chest, two exercises, it's a very very different example. So post exhaustion or um, pre exhaustion methodologies that's probably best suited on another video to make this one as short and concise as possible. Um, so start with antagonistic movements. Um, two or three exercises, more if you want to have more of a, an aerobic emphasis. The rest has to stay very low, the weight is therefore also very light in comparison, so apply it to your own goal. If aerobic training is your goal, you can have more exercises. Uh, if hypertrophy is your goal, you maybe just use two, and that way you can train at a higher intensity of your one rep max. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you've got any discussion, please post on my Facebook page. Objective discussion is always welcome. Arguments are never tolerated. Or alternatively, comment on the YouTube video. So, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it.